Mobile World Congress, and who are you? I'm uh, Mark Powell. I'm the executive director of the Bluetooth SIG. So Bluetooth SIG is the um, is Bluetooth. What is Bluetooth SIG? So Bluetooth SIG is a trade association of some 22,000 uh, member companies uh, who are all involved in Bluetooth products, Bluetooth technology, Bluetooth specifications. So the Bluetooth SIG actually supports all of those members in uh, developing products, qualifying their products and also marketing uh, the Bluetooth brand. So what is Bluetooth? Because like uh, how old is, um, at some point it started, it's been version 1, 2, 3 and 4 now, right? Yes. And every time it gets better or what? Yes, of course. How much better? <laughs> That's a difficult question, how long is a piece of string? But um, yeah, Bluetooth has been around since 1999 and 2000, so it's been around a while. Um, most recently we have now added Bluetooth 4.0 and 4.1 which have added a technology called Bluetooth Smart. And Bluetooth Smart is all about much lower power devices with an application framework which just makes it so easy for developers to develop small products with apps for their smartphones and tablets. Is that only 4.1 or is it also 4.0? 4.0 also. So, uh, in fact, all of the devices that you can see on our table here are Bluetooth smart devices. And uh, uh, how much lower power is 4 compared to 3? Um, well, the, the lower power, if you're doing a single mode device which is supporting the low power technology, you could get uh, on the very simple devices battery lives with a coin cell that might be two, three, four years. That's only before 4.0 you can yes, do that. Yes, exactly. That's amazing. Yes. But that's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's an order of magnitude or several orders of magnitude less power used now? Yes, exactly. Why? How? Well, there's a different radio that's being used that's designed more specifically for sending very small packets of information very infrequently. So the whole radio has been readjusted to take advantage of uh, being able to make small packets and send them. So basically, it could be like a tiny amount of data going once a every few seconds or something yes and then after there's a connection established it, it powers up a little bit and uses more power well a good example would be um, a heart rate monitor so a heart rate monitor is measuring your heartbeat which might be let's say 100 beats per minute or how frequently do you really need to update that probably no more than once a second so to be able to say 100 once a second really doesn't take very much information. It doesn't take much bandwidth, doesn't require much transmission spectrum. So these, these low energy radios now are designed to send those very small packets very infrequently. So that's the branding, it's the Bluetooth LE, low well, energy. So all this is LE, right? Well, it's the awesome. branding is Bluetooth Smart. Smart, not LE. Bluetooth LE is part of that. Okay. Bluetooth Smart is Bluetooth LE and an application framework that allows developers to create their sensor products and the applications very quickly and easily. So it's the two things together. So uh, does smart mean easier to use also? Like uh, one of the things with Bluetooth is you have to pair, uh, sometimes you have to pair again and pair and pair. Is there something that makes it simpler now? So pairing is still used. But, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is simpler for people because if you have a device like a smartphone and you buy a new Bluetooth smart device, you don't have to update the firmware in your smartphone. You just download the app, the app has all of the right updates, and now you can use your uh, Bluetooth smart accessory that you just purchased. So that makes it easier. Because I guess the main bottleneck in adoption of how people use Bluetooth is the pairing uh, transaction thing and some consumers might think of it as being maybe not easy enough or something but uh, what could be done to make it easier or some companies already doing some things that are clever with that well Bluetooth has had a simpler pairing mechanism for, for a while unfortunately a lot of applications for example in the car still use the old Bluetooth pairing mechanism so there are much simpler pairing mechanisms that are available today and when, when they're implemented, I think people are finding it easier to use. So how does it work to have, uh, how many devices can you have connected to uh, Bluetooth? 
So in theory, there is no limit, but it's a practical choice by a lot of manufacturers to uh, perhaps only limit it to a smaller number because it takes quite a bit of memory in order to have multiple devices. So if you're making a simple cheap device and it's perhaps a heart rate monitor, the idea is perhaps it only connects to three or four or five devices, then that's, that's all it needs to have and so the manufacturer would limit it to that. But the specification allows for there to be many devices, it's just an implementation choice. So Bluetooth is just the RF and it's a specific place in the RF field and that's Bluetooth, right? That's how it works? Bluetooth uses uh, a frequency band called the ISM band which is in the 2.4 gigahertz range. There are other technologies that also use that uh, spectrum. So for example, Wi-Fi uses that spectrum as well. Bluetooth can actually coexist with those other technologies. Bluetooth has adaptive frequency hopping. So if Bluetooth sees that there's a channel that's busy or uh, being interfe interfering with uh, its signal, then it will avoid those channels and only use the channels in the spectrum that are free. Is that something that's built into all devices? Yes, since since early in the early days of Bluetooth. Yes. It sounds like uh, advanced stuff. It's like a uh, white space automatic uh, interference avoidance. Right. And it, so, uh, what's what makes Bluetooth different from Wi-Fi? It's the same spectrum. So Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are targeted at different kinds of applications. Wi-Fi is all about bandwidth and networking things together. Bluetooth is all about really efficient point-to-point -point connections and really low power, simple connections as well. So they're, they're the kinds of products that we'll use, the kinds of applications that we we'll use those two technologies will be different. You can't have a standard that does both. Well, you have, certainly have devices that do both. I mean, most smartphones and tablets today do both technologies. There are a lot of manufacturers that make dual-mode chipsets, and the technologies can coexist very happily together. But you couldn't do a Bluetooth 5 that is as fast as Wi-Fi, or something. It wouldn't make any sense? Um, do they have the option to go as fast? It would, it would perhaps not, it's not really the direction that Bluetooth is going. We're more focused on enabling these massive array of smaller, low-powered sensor devices. So how big of a role is Bluetooth going to have in smart home, in the Internet of Things? I think uh, it's going to have a huge role. I mean, already we have a number of different products that are in the smart home space. So there's door locks that are already using Bluetooth Smart. We have um, power adapters that you can switch using Bluetooth Smart. We have light bulbs. There's a, an array of other products coming. And what's also important is that there are home uh, routers or routers, depending on how you pronounce the word, that uh, connect to the internet that will be coming soon, not just with Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth also. Nice. But isn't the problem with the smart home with Bluetooth that the range might not be enough for a whole house? Well, with, what would you do? With Bluetooth Smart, actually, the range is quite good. Uh, it's good for a home application. Uh, the, inside the Bluetooth technology, uh, our members are working to extend that range, but already right now it's a pretty good range. You could have cheap repeaters maybe? Yeah, there's already a company called Zuli that makes uh, repeater type products with Bluetooth. And you just connect them somewhere and then yes. it covers better the whole house, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. All the corners and everything. Exactly. You wouldn't want uh, like something not to work. Right. And uh, so the smartwatch. The only smartwatch that, that's interesting is the smart one, uh, the Bluetooth smart one, it's Bluetooth 4. But this number Bluetooth 4 is low, it's not, the battery's not going to last. Correct. So it's a big deal here, uh, mobile e-commerce. Yes. So you're going to see some things, I guess. Yes, there will be some. I, I have my pebble here. Smart? Yes, this is Bluetooth smart. It took Android a little time to get Bluetooth 4.0? Yes. Why? I think Android had a lot of things on their plate. Um, Apple obviously has set the bar pretty high and they had a lot to do and uh, it was just a matter of when they got around to it. They got around to it now and uh, it's available in 4.3, 4.4. Products are coming. And is there any idea of, uh, let's say I want to do a smart device with Bluetooth 4, how much is the electronics? On the device, is it like one dollar, or what, what is going on there? It's it's very, it's quite low. It's in that of that order of magnitude. Yes. Is it a is it a non processor or not? Now there's a processor involved. Is it ARM or it's not ARM? It's it's ARM. Yes. It's almost ARM. Well, it's 
pretty much always are. I mean, so it's like a Cortex M, something like that. I couldn't tell some, you some small ones. I couldn't tell you what choices the vendors are making, but it's it's right. usually arm in there. Cool.